Hey everyone, hope you are doing well. Welcome back to another video here on the channel. This week we're going to be taking a look at ratios, more specifically dealing with pulley systems as you would find them in radio controlled cars. Now we're going to go through the rule differences between gears and pulleys, how it actually applies, how do we actually name those types of systems, specifically the areas that we're interested in. We're then going to go through an example, see how to actually go through the calculation, and then I'm going to show you how to use these values on an online calculator as well. Let's get started and talk about rules. When it comes to gears versus pulleys, both those items can actually use the same exact rule set. You have a specific count that you're looking at when you are reviewing gears and you would do the exact same thing for pulleys. We know that the formula for figuring out the ratio is going to be your driven pulley or driven gear divided by your drive gear, as we'll see very soon here up on the board. Other rules that you also want to consider is how you actually are able to neglect certain components, certain pulleys or gears. Those are also going to apply for the system that we're working for or through today. So let's talk about how you actually name them. We're probably used to hearing this where if you have a gear and you know all the points on that gear is referred to as the teeth count or tooth count. That tooth count is important to us because it allows us to see the difference in size from one pinion gear versus a spur gear. However, when it comes to pulleys, it's not named teeth. It's actually named most commonly in books as grooves. And I drew a crude drawing of a pulley and every time you see sort of like one of those valleys, that is what is being referred to as a groove. So now let's go through an example and identify where we'll actually see these types of systems being used in our radio control car. So the first thing we have is we'll start right at our motor. This could work the same if it was a nitro engine as well. And here you have a 20 tooth gear and that's going to be your pinion gear driving this 50 tooth spur gear. Then from that spur gear we have a shaft with two pulleys directly attached to it. One of the pulleys here has a 15 groove and then the second one here on the exact same shaft also has a 15 groove. Now one assumption that we should make and this is a good assumption is that the ratio between the drive here coming from that spur gear to one of your shafts, whether it be the rear axle or the front axle, those ratios should be the same. In our case, it is. We know that because we see that this has a 45 groove. This also has a 45 groove pulley and then both the ones on the main shaft are 15. Therefore, we only need to do the calculation for one of them and we have the overall gear ratio for our system. So now let's go through and talk about how these actually apply. When you have a system working so that you have one gear reduction happening and then you have another axle that has another gear reduction happening as well, you do have to take the values between both of those and multiply them together. And you'll see that very shortly as we go through the overall formula. So not only does it apply to the actual gears using the tooth count, but you also apply the same thing to pulleys. It's absolutely no different. So let's go into another example where things become a little bit more confusing. And you may actually see this on certain models of radio control cars. Here's the same idea where this blue shaft represents what's coming from your motor or your nitro engine. And then that power feeds into the spur gear and you're gonna have a ratio and we can assume that it's a 22 and 52. So we just swap the direction around so now we're flipping it. So you're having the same exact gear ratio there and then you're applying power to this main shaft and then you have two pulleys that are on that main shaft. One pulley going to the rear and then the other pulley going to what is known as more of like a center shaft where it's able to redistribute the power in a different part of the vehicle. In this case, we're moving over to the left side of the vehicle. If this was the front again, and we're gonna distribute that power from our center shaft to our front shaft. Now the big question is what's happening all in this center piece? Well, we have the point here that pulleys with equal groove counts can actually be ignored. So in other words, this 20 groove pulley here on the main shaft is equal to the same amount of grooves to the center shaft pulley here, 20 and 20, and both of them are linked by a single belt. 
because both of them are linked, we can essentially assume that this pulley would be mounted directly to our main shaft, completely ignoring what's going on in this center. Why? When we have the tooth count or the groove count being identical here, tooth when it comes to gears and groove when it comes to pulleys, we are going to see a one-to-one -one ratio. A one-to-one -one ratio is simply just to transfer power from here to a different location and it's not affecting our gear ratio whatsoever. So that's why we can end up removing that there. Another thing to consider, and we'll talk about this for specifically gears, is if we have the same thing happening, if it was a gear, I just want to go through this very quickly, where we have a center gear. You have this this happening in some radio control guards where this is going to be the one that is driven and this is going to be your output. In this case, this gear has absolutely no effect on the actual gear ratio. So a very similar scenario happening between this example and this one here. So now the next thing that we need to go through is the actual calculation that we have here on the top right hand side of our board. So the gear ratio is known as your driven gear divided by your drive gear, where your driven gear is always the gear that is going to be driven by the motor driving that drive gear. So everything there should be self-explanatory. And from there, we need to multiply the first set by the second set. Our first set is going to be this pair, and then our second set is going to be this pair, that grouping. And we only need to do this one time because we can ignore the other one. It's going to be the exact same gear ratio used for our front axle as it is to the rear axle. So we can actually ignore the rear if we're looking at only the front. So here we go, we just substitute our values in. In this case, our first one is going to be for the gears. We have 50 tooth divided by our 20 tooth. And then for our pulley system, we're gonna have the 45 groove divided by the 15 groove pulley. From there, we get values of 2.5 multiplied by three, and we can see our overall drive ratio for this particular system is going to be 7.5. So what we'll do is we'll throw this into a calculator so you can see this work. If you do come across online calculators and you don't know how to actually put these values into them, we'll go through that. We're gonna use the exact same values here. So let's go take a look at that, find out how that works. We're gonna use the radiocontrolinfo.com website here to go through our pulley example. Now we're gonna go through and enter in the motor KV as well as the lithium polymer cell count, and then we're going to place the values for the pinion gear as well as the spur gear. Those were 20 and 50 if you do recall from our example. As for the diff pinion number and the spur number, this is where we enter the pulley values into these locations. The smaller pulley value, this is going to be the 15 groove pulley. That gets entered into the diff pinion or the pinion gear side of things. And then as for the actual spur number, we're gonna enter in the larger pulley, which is going to be a 45 groove pulley. So we enter those values and then you put in your tire diameter and from there you can go and submit the calculator. The value that we got here is 91.9 kilometers per hour. That's obviously not so relevant. What is relevant is this is how we use the calculator to place those pulley values into a calculator that was designed around a gear system. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you learned something about pulley systems as it relates to gear systems. Both these systems have their advantages and disadvantages. If you wanna see something on that, let me know in the comment section below. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.